Okay, so let's begin. Um, my name is Alan Wolf. I started learning C++ in high school because I wanted to make games and found out I really enjoy it. I'm working as a software engineer at Medtronic. I write a technical blog and participate in game jam in my spare time. And I also like to experiment with new features and libraries. Um, also, I'm a, what most people call self-taught, um, even though I think this term is far from the truth, since I was never by myself. I've learned a lot from many people who shared their skills and knowledge in various ways, including in conferences like this one. So thanks to everyone who organized, participate and attend, because without people like you, I may not have been able to do what I love. Generative programming. Uh, in short, it's when you have a software component that can generate other software components. And in C++, it applies to two features, templates and macros. Because we can use a template to generate many variations of a class or a function, and we can do the same thing with macros. Uh, there are many pros for templates, and I can't cover them all in a single slide, but I would like to highlight some of them. First, templates are even better now in C++20 with the addition of concepts, increased support for non-type template parameters, especially in combination with concepts per features. Also, unlike macros, can, a template can access compile time information. Uh, there is a drawback to templates, and it is that template parameters can only be types or concepts per values. Uh, here we have an example of a template that takes a name, access, and some keywords and uses it to generate a class with a data member, a getter, and a setter. But this is not, uh, this code is not possible because this is not a valid C++. Uh, so unlike templates, macros are evaluated by the preprocessor and can't access compile time information. Also, it is impossible to constrain the argument of macros because it is just text. Everything is text. So um, we have uh, no way to validate it. And lastly, uh, templates have bad readability, maintainability, and usability. Macros have bad readability, maintainability, and usability in comparison to templates. Uh, here we have two implementation of print all, one that uses template and another that uses macros. And it's easy to see which one is uh, nicer, it is uh, better to work with. Um, also, the second evaluation of the print all is an example of a misuse that doesn't count a compilation error. It will print only one, two and three will not be printed. Uh, meta classes is a proposal by Herb Satters, which he presented at his talk, Meta, Thoughts on Generative C++, and it was one of the inspirations for this project. Meta classes can be used to generate C++ classes, and in his talk, Herb showed an example how they can be used to implement C++'s enum class and C Sharp's interface. Um, but meta classes is still a proposal, so it is unknown uh, if or when it will be part of the language. Circle is a new compiler by Sean Baxter. It has many reflection and metaprogramming language extensions, such as iterating over data members and their names. Also, uh, Circle allows embedding GLSL directly in the C++ code to generate shaders during compilation. If we look at features from other languages, Rust has procedural macros that can generate code by modifying the abstract syntax tree. Uh, here we have an example of a macro. It takes a token stream of the current code and returns a token stream of the modified code. Uh, Dmixins can inject a compile time computed string and compile it in, in place. And in this example, we use a mixin to add a call to write line that will print high and a smiley face. And Jai allows arbitrary compile time code execution. So if in C++ we can only do certain things during in a contextual function, in Jai you can do everything during compilation. For example, open the calculator or write to a file. Uh, so we've seen a proposal, we've seen a compiler with language extensions, and we've seen features from other languages. And now you may ask yourself, what can we do right now in C++? Well, the answer is everything. If your compiler supports C20 and you are willing to use undefined behavior, uh, more <laughs> on that later. <laughs> the plan, how are we going to achieve it? So, first, we will use templates and other compile time features to validate the user's input um, because we want to have a valid and clean interface, unlike uh, with macros. Then, we will generate a compile time string of code. 
make the compiler output this string, extract the string from the compiler's output, execute arbitrary logic or write the generated code to a file, and uh, the final step is we are going to compile the generated code as part of the current project. Um, the first step is input validation, and in C++ there are three ways to validate input during compilation. Concepts, static assert, and throwing from a const expert function. Uh, concepts are the only ones that are part of the function signature, and therefore they also take uh, part in overload resolution. They can be used to uh, restrict the, uh, and validate the template type parameters. Um, but because they are part of the function signature, they can't be used on, the, on a variables inside the function's body. Um, so if you have a const expert variables, you can use both static assert and a throw from a const expert function. Uh, but in this case, I recommend using static assert because it makes the intent clearer and it also provides a better error message. And if you are using regular variables, your only option is to throw from a const expert function. Uh, the next section is about the kind of error that you will get uh, if the validation fails. So um, regarding concepts, uh, all three compilers shows the template instantiation stacks and details. But I found MSVC lacking uh, in details co compared to the other two. Um, you can't provide a costume error message for concepts, but ideally you would pick a descriptive name for the concept so that the error would be clear. Uh, for static assert, uh, all three com measure compilers show uh, uh, all the template instantiation stack, and it, you can also provide an error message. And from throwing from a context per function, um, only MSVC doesn't show the template instantiation stack, and you can somewhat provide an error message by throwing a string literal. Static strings. So uh, we are going to use this class to uh, wrap a fixed size array so it can be used as a non-type template parameter. Um, this is the class that we will uh, use to um, represent our compile time string of code. And uh, because it has a, a const expert constructor, we can call foo here with a string literal and have nice and expressive syntax. Uh, but we need a way to convert from std string to static string. And we can do it by using a const x per lambda. Uh, here we have a function to static string that takes as a non-type template parameter a const x per lambda. And the uh, idea is that we are going to call it twice. Once in a const x per context, so it can be used as the size of the static string uh, template parameter, and another to get the actual string. Then we are going to copy from the regular string to the static string and return it. Since we are generating a, a, st a string of uh, C++ code, we need a way to convert a type to its string representation. We can get the string representation of a file from of a type from the function signature by using the functsig macro for uh, msvc and pretty function for clang and gcc. Um, it is not part of the standard, so it technically uh, uses undefined behavior, but I've checked uh, this behavior on previous compi compiler versions in Compiler Explorer, and it hasn't changed so far, so it is relatively stable. Static print. So now the next thing that we need is a way to make the compiler output our compile time string. Um, we can do it in a different way uh, for each uh, compiler, for MSVC, we can use pragma message. For GCC, we will generate an unused warning. And for uh, Clang, we will generate a deprecated warning. Um, same as before, it relies on a relatively stable undefined behavior um, that uh, haven't changed so far, but it's still undefined behavior. Um, in Clang and GCC, it also prints the template instantiation stack, and it can be a useful tool for debugging templates. Here, we create a context per array of integers and we pass it to static print. And as you can see, the values of the array are printed by each one of the compilers. And uh, now we need to some way to uh, get the output of the compiler. I, first, I've tried to do it by using a DLL injection and hook the write file function. Uh, but this approach was abandoned for a few reasons. Uh, it is incredibly intrusive and not portable. It requires filtering since there are many call to write files. And it requires running an external process to inject the DLL. 
Also, it can miss some of the output if the hook is set up too late. Uh, the, a better way to do it is by using compiler proxy. The idea is that we are going to have a, a program sit between the build system and the compiler. Um, the build system will invoke the compiler proxy with some command line arguments. The compiler proxy will then call the, invoke the compiler with the same command line arguments. Um, then it will listen to the compiler's output and pass them back to the build system. Uh, redirecting uh, to the compiler proxy can be done explicitly in the build system or implicitly by placing it in a higher priority folder in the path environment variable so that the call will go to the compiler proxy instead of the compiler. Before the compiler uh, proxy will forward the output to the build system, uh, it will extract the string and then execute arbitrary logic, for example, uh, we can write to a file, we can uh, call the system function, or we can inject the string into another file. But now we have a problem because of compilation order. So in this example, we have two files, generate my class and my class. And in generate my class, we have a function that during compilation generates a string of code and writes it into my class. The problem is that if my class is being compiled before the generated code is written to it, then our generated code won't be compiled. And we have no way to know which one of them will be compiled uh, first. Uh, they can even be compiled in parallel. So how can we solve this problem? We can solve this by using modules. Um, the, when we're using modules, the build system first scans for module dependencies. And uh, internally, it uh, co creates a dependency graph. And it makes sure that module dependencies are compiled before the files which import them. So here we have the same example as before, but now with modules. Uh, so in generate my class, we export some module. And in my class, we import the same module. And this dependency makes sure that my class will be compiled only after the generated code is written to it. And so our generated code will be compiled, and we solve the problem. Um, we, are, we want to perform file operation during compilation, and so we need to somehow get the path at compile time. And we can do this by using std source location. Uh, source location current returns an object that represent uh, the place that called the, the source location current. And the source location object has a final method that returns the path to the file. Um, when using source location in a default template parameter, uh, it has a tricky behavior. Um, here we have two functions, bad and good. And in bed, uh, in we call a source location current inside the const expert expression um, as a default template argument. Uh, so here, the call to bed will actually print the path to the file of the function, not the file of the function call, um, because source location current is called from the uh, inside the default template parameter. Uh, we can solve this by uh, using a struct with a const expert constructor. Um, so uh, here, the curly braces in the call to good is actually a call to the context per constructor. And therefore, the call to source location current happens from main, and it prints the correct path. Also, a uh, bonus fact, if you take uh, the expression from the uh, default template parameter and use it as a default template, different function argument, you will get different behavior across compilers. So when it comes to uh, default function arguments, I recommend always calling source location current to avoid this issue. Uh, regarding uh, compiler and build system support, so here you have the implementation status for the compilers uh, for, build, uh, for uh, modules. And uh, right now, it's not complete yet. Um, if you want to use right, uh, modules right now, an important thing to know is that Clang doesn't support including standard handers in module files yet, only header units, and also that compiling header units in Clang is not as straightforward as you may hope. Um, regarding modules build system support, so CMake doesn't support modules yet, but I found, uh, after searching, I found XMake, which is a Lua-based build system that supports modules for the free major compilers. It is also uh, very friendly to use and has an extension for Visual Studio Code. Um, regarding constexpr uh, compiler support, so Clang doesn't support using std string in a constexpr function. So some of the code examples from the previous slides uh, can't be compiled with Clang yet. Demo? Okay. 
All right, so here we have uh, three folders, one for compiler proxy, another Increase for... Font, what? Increase font, please. Yeah, in a second. Um, one for compiler proxy, one for the example, and another for gen, which is a, a header-only, dependency-free, compile time libraries for uh, arbitrary compile time execution and code generation. Um, let's open um, the example a look at um, one second. Yeah. Okay, so here we have the example. The first thing you can see is that we have an if the for Clang. This is because Clang currently doesn't compile, doesn't have all of the C++ 20 features that we need. Um, then we import some modules. Here we have some uh, class that uh, inherits from shape and uh, overrides some of its methods. Uh, we have some uh, in something that looks like an enum class a material that we can have iterate over its members and their names, and we print the names, and another function call. Um, let's look at the actual modules, and this is empty. They are all empty because they haven't been generated yet. Um, let, if we, the code generation will happen from this function. Um, uh, this note that this function is not being exported, and it isn't called anywhere. The code generation happens when this function is being compiled. Uh, first, it will open the calculator. Then, it will create an uh, interface class. And e all of the inputs here are being validated during compilation. So if I try to do something like this, I will get a, comp a compilation error and no invalid code will be generated. Uh, same thing if I have a typo here, for example. Uh, then we generate an enum class. We inject some strings into a file. And last, we generate an... Uh, a struct definition for GLSL and C++ that can be used as a uniform buffer. So, um, let's compile it. First, we were going to configure XMake to use GCC. And now we are going to run XMake so that it will compile everything. It opened the calculator during compilation. And it has already generated code uh, in these files. It finished compiling even. Um, let's try to run the uh, compiled uh, executable. I'll try to run it. And it prints the names of the data members. Um, if we look at the uh, generated code, so here it has generated an interface. Here it has generated a costume implementation of an enum class. It has injected some strings. And lastly, they generated a material uh, struct definition uh, for uh, uh, C++ and also for GLSL. Um, these examples are just to show what is possible, not how it should be implemented. And for example, this code that iterates over data members and their name, a more robust will implementation will generate a metadata tuple that uh, each element will contain a pointer to the data member. The, the name of the data member, and maybe a list of some metadata attributes. Um, regarding the setup, so... Um, if we go uh, here inside C, I have a priority path, which I set to be the highest priority in my path environment variable, and I have three copies of compiler proxy named after the three compilers. Inside config.txt is a mapping to the path of the actual compilers. Um, but we are still missing two features. If you remember, uh, in Rust, you can modify the abstract syntax tree. And in Circle, uh, you can generate shaders during compilation. So let's kill two birds with one stone. Um, I've uh, used operator overloading to implement a domain-specific language that creates an AST during compilation. And this AST can then be converted into a GLSL string code. Um, when we already um, compiled this example, it has generated a string of GLSL code. So let's take this string, um, go to 
shader toy, which is a great site to uh, um, play with shaders and do artistic things. Paste the code, run, and it works. Um, but this is all black and white. It's kind of boring. So we can go back. And here there are two coils that I'm going to uncomment of a function. And what this function does is it finds uh, the variable declaration node in the AST and replaces its initial value. Um, so Let's compile again. And it has finished compiling, therefore we have the new generated code. I'm going to paste the new code, and we have some nice colors. Um. So let's look at the downsides of this technique. Uh, first, it uses undefined behavior, but it is a uh, it uses the static print and the type to string function. It's not part of the standard, and as far as I know, the compilers don't specify that you can use this warning to print the, the string of from the template. Uh, so, yeah, maybe unspecified sounds a better. Uh, yeah. Um, a compiler proxy is currently only for Windows, um, but. It, this is about the target platform, not the, this is about the, the development environment, not the target platform. So if you're using Windows and cross-compiling to Linux or any other platform, then you don't have a problem. And also I plan to make it a cross-platform. Uh, it needs support for uh, C++ 20 features. Um, the examples compile on GCC and MSVC, but only some of them compile with Clang. Uh, hopefully it will catch up soon. It requires setting up compiler proxy, but it is very easy and can be done quickly. And lastly, it can't generate code into the current file. Uh, the pros, first we get an expressive and clear syntax. Um, we can validate and constrate the user's input, unlike in macros. Um, everything in C++, so the gen library is in C++, the code generation logic is in C++. Then it gets to compiler proxy, which is also in C++. So it is C++ all the way, and you have access to compile time information. It also enables arbitrary compile time execution. Um, it has powerful code generation tools. You can generate keywords. You can generate access specifiers. You can generate names of data members and templates. You can generate any C++ code that you want, and you can even generate code in other languages. Uh, it can be used right now with C++20, so you don't have to wait to any next standard. Um, if you are a library developer, then you can't possibly ask your user to set up compiler proxy on their machine. But you don't need to if you are committing the generated code. Since they will have the generated code, they won't need to generate it themselves. Y uh, you can even set it up in a way that you don't commit any of the code generation files, and then nobody will ever know that you are using gen. Um, it reduces manual work and reduces code duplication, which is always a good thing. Some possible use cases. Um, first, when if you are working with C++ and in other languages, then you usually need to write language binding or some interface. Um, you can, now you can generate them during compilation, so that if you change your C++ code, your language binding code will be generated automatically. Uh, you can enforce some practices and rules. For example, so generate everything as const by default, um, or make all the functions start, or force all the standard uh, function to start with capital letter. Uh, you can generate compile time metadata that can be used uh, to implement features such as uh, reflection. And um, since we have uh, arbitrary code execution, you can, for example, run a task to bake assets that depends on the C++ code. For example, compile the GLSL into SpearV. And lastly, it can be an alternative to macros in a certain cases. Possible future uh, improvements. Uh, first, make compiler proxy cross-platform. Uh, most of the Windows-specific specific code is for the process creation. And I've already started looking at boost process uh, to replace it. Um, next, we are going to 
add examples to CMake and other build system once they will support modules. Improve performance of code, the uh, context per code, especially string formatting. Um, right now it simply concatenates the string, which is incredibly inefficient. Uh, consider converting from headers to modules when compilers will be ready. I think it can have some benefits. And lastly, add uh, more features and examples. Uh, the example, the compiler proxy, and the gen library are, are all available at this GitHub link. Um, some closing thoughts. I don't think it should be part of the standard. I do think that there is an adapt potential for external tools like compiler proxy. And having static print as part of the standards will be great, um, uh, both for debugging uh, compile time code and as a way to communicate with users of compile time libraries. Uh, thank you, and if you have questions, you can ask them now or later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, uh, I've just uh, I I'm currently st still working on it. I think it uh, it needs some more improvements uh, before it can be used, and also we we need to have more mature uh, uh, compiler and build system support uh, for for the C plus plus twenty features that it needs. Um, like uh, I've. It's better now, but uh, when I started developing it, I've encountered some, uh, as always, when using new compiler features, uh, you, you get some internal compiler error and bugs. Um, now it's less, but uh, it's still not uh, perfect yet. Yes? Let me see if I understand it properly. You have a, a proxy which parses the diagnostics of the compiler, and you generate Uh, the benefit of doing it like this and not from Python, for example, is that it runs from the compiler. So you have access to all the C++ features that you are familiar with, and you have access to all the compile time if information. Um, you, you, ca you, get, you don't need to actually pass the C++ file. It already passes and it already runs in the compilers. So you have everything there, and you don't need to have an external tool or use it in a, in, in a different language. It's all in C++ and it's all the compiler. Uh, so these are the benefits. Yes. Uh, const experts, the shortcoming from client currently are um, modules. It still doesn't uh, support modules fully. And uh, using a const expert string in a const expert function. Using string in a const expert function. Yes. Um, you, you can't do it because y you are compiling multiple, if you wait until you have the executable, then you have the problem that you are not compiling the generated code because it's not generated yet. You need the generated code during the compilation. Um, I mean, when... Uh, yeah, but uh, oh, for about what you. Um, I, I will accept the the questions offline. Uh, we need to continue.